looks like we're almost ready to go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Looks like we are off. Now this normally takes about, what is it, 45 seconds to, or sorry, not 45 seconds, it's a little bit longer than that, for the intro to get into the game. But Kakariko does have a few tricks that make you path faster through it to get your time down a little bit more. Yeah, the intro takes a little bit, but um, after that we will see, a, I would say, a kind of standard for the beginning of every OET run, where you crop the sheet and so on. I don't remember the actual time of how long the intro takes. Do you, do you remember that off the top of your head? Uh, I think it was about three minutes, if I'm not wrong. It's somewhere around three minutes. I think I was trying to say 2 minutes 45 seconds and 45 seconds came out. <laughs> it's everybody's favorite fairy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, do the one of the two of you want to explain what does no I am slash WW stand for? I just wanted to explain it that we should exp um, let's say what what it actually means. Um, no I am is basically we don't do any item manipulation. We don't get um, RBA or something like that. We don't um, do uh, any other sort of um, getting an item in our inventory do a, a glitch and no ww means no wrong warp so we don't use any um warps to uh, basically warp ourselves to the ganondor or other stuff dungeons perfect thank you dustin there's a there's a, um, a category that is called no RBA, no wrong rob, and they use um, the the glitch was found where you can manipulate the menu uh, to get the light arrows in your inventory. So that's why we have here no IM in this case. You get the light arrows the normal way. Um, in this game, it is faster to walk backwards. It is to walk forwards. Um, and over long distances, it's faster to walk backwards than it is to roll. Yeah, it, um, I think it was if you have to do more than three rolls, forward rolls, then it would be faster to backwalk. Yes, and then you'll see them jump off of this and uppercut basically and jump up on top of that. I missed it on Bell's side. Looks like Bell's doing something a little different here. Oh, did he actually take a different path? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He went for the uh, the yeah, blue rupee. He went, he went the other way. Yeah, 
Yeah, that means TKC is off to a little bit of a lead. Yeah, Delta, it's still allowed to glitch through doors. I mean, you can clip through everything here, but um, yeah, it's not a glitchless run. It just means that you don't uh, manipulate your inventory and don't use strong up. And they both got a first try there. I think TKC had to do it twice. But oh, did he? he? Yeah. He missed the spot barely. Now we've got Sorry giving you your first ocarina. Little song. Uh, Delta, they will only do Shadow Temple, but they will dabble in a few of the dungeons. Um, they have to do two dungeons. The game checks if you have the Spirit Temple Medallion and the uh, Forest Temple Medallion. So you need to have these in your inventory and then you can go to the cathedral, you get your light arrows and then you can move on to the castle. Oh, that's my favorite owl. <laughs> so annoying. Best owl. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of helpful in the first playthrough, as in when I did this as a kid, but <laughs> since then I found it annoying. I mean, he does have some useful info if you're just playing through for the first time. So now both of these runners are going to try to get to Kakariko and the castle before it becomes nighttime. Yeah, and, and a beautiful rest. The rest is a extended uh, super slide throughout the water. And that will let you go, um, I would say, as fast as the super slide, the normal super slide, but the with the ESS or the extended super slide, they can move around. And since they um, recoil off the wall, they still have the speed from uh, the super slide. I'm sorry, real quick here, just a technical thing. Uh, Corlea, do you mind uh, checking your D uh, Discord DMs? Yeah, no, I checked. Am I too quiet still? A little bit? Louder. A little bit louder? Is that better? Uh, to me it sounds pretty good. Okay. So earlier we had a, a cutscene dive with the Coco and we had a Navi dive on, from DKC. So these tricks look really cool. I mean, the, especially the, the cutscene dive with the Coco, is, that looks so funny. Yeah, because of the animation, they are able to drop to the bottom of the well and get into the bottom of the well too grab a few items here. And it looks like Bell's having some problems here. Yeah, it's the next um, dive they have to do. Dive only works uh, if you're above water. 
So he tries to yeah, pull out the Ocarina so he can dive on the bottom and then grab his uh, shoes. There we go. Next stop should be then Zelda. And after that we are already going to the Master Sword. Oh, uh, you may have noticed on Bell's screen right there that he targeted the sign. The only reason why he does that is that avoids talking to the owl there. The owl can't talk to you when you're targeting something. Oh, and we grab money since we have to buy the, the Hylian shield. You can get one on the graveyard, but uh, I think it's faster to grab it or uh, buy it here. With the amount of rupees that are laying around, it's quicker to do it that way. If they were doing a 100% run, then it would be quicker to grab it from the graveyard. Yeah, since you need the money for something else. Uh, in chat, I just posted a link to the runners' uh, streams. Make sure to go follow them. Let them know that we're watching. Oh, the guards are always so trolly sometimes. Yeah. I don't know how many times I got caught as a kid. God, too. Ouch. Ooh. Uh, the guard cycles are random, am I correct? Uh, yes, to an extent, but as soon as you walk through that door, they're always standing in usually specific locations. But sometimes you can get past them if they look a specific direction and just slide by them. By missing the bomb boost? Down, he's now doing it the safe way with pause buffering. Yeah, we'll see if oh, he mega flip. The second time. Yeah, he's doing a mega flip. Yep, there we go. Okay, nice. Looks like Bell cleanly almost got through all of that. He just has yeah. this last one coming up. Yeah. If I recall correctly, if you side hop, the guards can't catch you in that moment. 
So he had yeah perfect side hops in this case. Yeah, he saved a lot of time and caught up a little bit on TKC there. Cards work if you're side hopping. If you have frame perfect side hops, they won't catch you. Yeah. Uh, because for whatever reason, it has to. They have to re uh, register two frames before they can catch you. So if you do frame perfect side hops, they won't catch you. Basically, look like a shadow on the wall to them. Yeah, Bell did it really good. Yeah, people posted it just uh, with link. No inventory manipulation or item uh, manipulation means we don't create an item in our inventory. There are other categories where you, I don't know, create more bottles or even the light arrows. So this uh, will be not creating anything in your inventory. A good example of that is uh, when you do 100% runs, a uh, few of them will get a fairy in a bottle after getting a fish in a bottle, and that is manipulating the item to make it think that it has a fairy. Now, TKC here, he will try to do a death at a timely manner so that he can skip the uh, cutscene that's about to come up. And it looks like he may have gotten it. Yeah, learning the song here and watching the cutscene takes a little bit, so... Obviously, we want to go fast and we don't want to see it. Yeah, and dying there is the best way to do it. I think that cutscene is about 2 minutes 15 seconds. I, I would believe it. I haven't watched it in a while, so... <laughs> <laughs> cutscene skip. Uh, uh, TKC's gonna buy his uh, rule shield and continue on his merry way. And that's basically it what we see from Chatlink in this run. Yes sir it is. I would love to learn how to do this glitch. <laughs> Not gonna lie. He is going to glitch through the wall and he is going to be able to get the Master Sword even though he doesn't have any of the pendants from a child. It looks like Bell messed up a little bit on that one. I'll have to redo it. Yeah, his initial setup looked really, really flawless. Oh wow, messed it up again. He's gonna lose a uh, quite a bit of time here. Ah, oh, there we go. You got it that time. Yeah, he jumped just too early, I think. 
At least it looked like that. Some boring text mission coming up, so... I forget, how long is this cutscene? Isn't it like a couple of minutes? Talking to the old man to get your pendant? I think, or yes. Medallion. Is it four minutes? I'm not sure about it. How, how long it is exactly. This game, you it does not have a faster text. Sometimes it, you just have to bear with it and let it scroll. So it it does take a little bit longer if you have to watch these cutscenes. Um, do you guys mind if I do the plug real quick here? Actually. Once we got a minute or two. Sure. Cool. You are just tuning in right now. This is the RTA in Japan 2 Marathon. It is the speedrunning marathon in Japan. Uh, you are currently watching the English language restream hosted here on twitch.tv slash speedgaming3. It also hosts a variety of speedrun events, marathons, and tournaments. Uh, so please follow all four speed gaming channels. Um, show your support to the runners uh, by giving them a follow. Commentators by also giving them a follow. I just realized, actually, they, uh, the link for mine is not going to work because they misspelled the name. <laughs> there we go. That's a correct. Sorry, say that one more time. Uh, yes. Sorry, yeah, I see it now. That okay, cool. That's correct. It is a little bit of a weird name, so I mean, I can understand why it gets mispronounced and everything. It happens to me as well. They always called me Dustin instead of Dustin. Now, after talking to the uh, the man and getting your medallion, you talk to somebody named Sheik, who is important throughout the entire game because they will give you some songs when you get to specific spots. So. But we will not be seeing a lot of him in this run. Uh, yes, this is going to be a race, so to speak. <laughs> I saw it coming as soon as I said it. Yeah, I never zoom it. <laughs> Peak is genderless. Fair enough. <laughs> I 
And now we go to the graveyard to grab the not the not the hook shot. The... Oh yeah, it's it's the hook shot. We get later the long shot, but we don't grab it in this one. Yeah, no, in this run we do not actually get the long shot at all. Yeah. And a lot of people at this time, if you actually watch people speedrun for the hook shots and stuff, a lot of people like to uh, see how long it's going to take by typing in the chat of how many seconds they think it's going to take. Yeah, it's the usual guess game like you have in Mario 64 or in other stuff. Or the big key chest in Ganon's Tower. Yeah. If anyone wants to do their guesses for, um... For or Bell Bell. here. That would be fantastic. I'm gonna guess a 49. I am gonna guess like a 50 or 51. Probably 50 though. But so far it looks like he has flawless movement. Ooh. <clears throat> that was a... Commentator's curse. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we can't have nice things, guys. Now we will see the fifty one. Uh, on TKC's stream over there, you're going to see some interesting things. Do you guys want to explain what's going on there? Uh, he will perform a hookshot jump, which he just did. And then he will get infinite sword screech, so he can't fall off the ledges here. Infinite sword screech means he will um, have his this light glow, the white glow around the sword, which means the sword is swinging every frame he can. And that prevents him from falling off ledges. And the big major thing that they're going to get out of here is the hover boots which will come in handy later for some of the glitches as well. And it looks like Bell did the jump very well on that one too. Yeah, Tiki Say had the uh, mess up at the first try, so Bell made up some time here. Like Bell took the saver strat to make sure that he was uh, facing the right or in the right spot for the jump. And TKC picking up his hover boots. He'll be able to progress even farther now yeah and they will now do a really cool trick to get to the boss room yeah the first time i saw this one i was very confused how they managed to do it i thought what are they doing when they were setting it up like this I had no clue what was coming. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there are a lot of glitches in this game that they just work. I mean, I watch OT run since 2012, 
but sometimes they come up with stuff still now they come up with stuff that it's it's insane but it looks like he has some problems for setting it up yeah it looks like he's having a few problems getting to getting to work we'll see if uh bell can do it a little bit quicker Yeah, it was to get the uh, infinite sword glitch. Oh, looks like TKC might have it this time. With Bell right behind him. Yeah, Bell got it really fast. Now there is a lot of pa pause buffering to get the frame perfect so that they can jump up. And it looks like TKC has it. Yeah, now the, on TKC screens comes cool stuff. Yeah, they basically are in front of the boss room, but you don't see anything. It was the ledge in front of the boss room. And uh, now they are trying to clip through the boss door. If he's going to try to roll here, and if he gets it correctly, then that looks like he got it correct. Nope, he didn't. It looked like he had it. I think he may have been a frame too early on that. Yeah, it's basically a ledge clip, where you clip into the ledge and then the shoe will push you through the door. And it just kind of goes to show how quick, you know, someone can catch up in this run here. Oh yeah. Uh... Oh, it looks like Bell actually got it on that one. That was very good. Yeah, he took his time there to yes. get it. Oh, we haven't explained uh, how to get the infinite sword glitch, so do you mind doing that? Uh, it probably wouldn't be the best explanation for me, if personally. Because uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I haven't I don't speed run these games, so I'm not 100% sure exactly how it works. You just saw a TKC stream that he um, was crouch stepping, and while crouch stepping, you pick up anything. You or you can read the sign. You interrupt the step with uh, a press, and if you do it on the correct frame, um, on the correct time, then you will get the infinite sword glitch. It works with bombs, you see it sometimes doing with bombs. Uh, as I said, you can do it with shields, picking up stuff. A lot of uh, a lot of other things work there. And it uh, looks like Bell finished the shadow boss through the glitch with the uh, hook shot. It basically is, you have the infinite sword glitch and all you have to do is keep shooting with the hook shot to keep it stunned and it finishes off the boss pretty quickly for you oh i forgot to mention that uh, you can uh, glitch also talking to navi wait you can i didn't realize that one yeah i don't think i've seen anybody do it <laughs> uh that's no i basically um you um crouch step and then you talk to navi that interrupts it I mean, uh, I think he's just saw it in open bad screens to get it for the boss. So we will see it here. He will um, talk to Navi very soon while targeting the hands. Maybe I may have missed that, but yeah. I mean, I, I wondered how they got the infinite sword glitch over here.
Your chest sword. Yeah. It, it's just that quick. Yeah. Then do you have, just have to stand there and hit him over and over again? I mean, they have to do nothing because they have infinite sword glitch. Yeah. Basically, it acts like the hook shot as well. It keeps him stunned there. Uh, you can stun uh, or I would say keep bosses in place because they try to defend against hookshot or bows. So um, the sword will still hit them, but the hookshot will then keep them in place. Since we had uh, only two so far, we need the bombs. And to get the bombs, we have obviously go into Dodongo's cavern. That's where Bell is heading right now. He'll be picking up a couple hearts as well. On his way in. Pathing on this was very interesting whenever I watched it. Whenever I watched both of their PBs. Yeah, I wasn't I was not used to it since they don't get a bottle early on. And um, what I'm used to when watching or what you will um, see if you watch other runs um, of OT. Uh, they usually get a, a fairy in a bottle and then they do a um, very cool boost up the, the bridge on the upper part to... Yeah, it's, it's basically a fairy boost. You you die on a certain frame by gripping with the hookshot, the, the ladder, then you will jump up to the to the bridge, then you die and the fairy will revive you. But since we don't have a bottle in this case, we have to go around. The other question with that is, uh, I don't remember correctly, is the fairy that you would have gotten from that bottle actually item manipulation? I think it is. Which is why they do it this way. After I was sit thinking about it for a little bit. Uh, you, you could also... Uh... Um, I mean, uh, getting a bottle early on is not really hard since you can crypt the cocos. And if you go to a, yeah, a stone, basically here in the cavern on the left side, I think there was a stone in there, um, which you slash and then it tells you the time. You can play a Zelda song and then you get a fairy out of it. So you could technically crap always a fairy. You don't have to manipulate your inventory for it. That's true. Because you could get Song of Storms if you wanted to. <clears throat> but it's faster this way. Yeah, I was about to say, I think it's probably faster. Uh, yeah, if you crypt the bottle, uh, that alone takes like three minutes, crypting the bottle, or two minutes. Uh, yeah, two minutes roughly, if you have perfect RNG with it, basically. Yeah, then you have to play the song. Then grab the ferry and stuff, and yeah, I think this is way faster. Now we have to grab magic. The reason for that is we need the light arrows later, and to use the light arrows, yeah, we need magic, so that's why we climb up the death mountain. 
Looks like Bell almost got hit by that uh, little guy there. Yeah, they can be mean. I mean, here in this version of uh, or Zelda OT, or they are kind of nice, but they are really fierce in the 3D version. They don't let you go up there so easily. Yeah, and the way to be able to do that is to just stop moving and it will register that there's nothing there until it looks away and then you can continue to climb. Yeah, you can basically stutter step or stutter climb in this case to go up and it will not charge uh, to you at all. Yeah, it might be my mic that uh, pops a couple times. I will switch it right now. Now, as you'll see here on bells, he is going to slip past the little guy here to be able to get to the forest temple. Usually you would need Saria's song in order to get past him, but with just a precise backflip you can get around him pretty easily. Yeah, he just stored a ground jump. That's why he can jump up so high. It's not a difficult trick, as you saw. Um, but it gets you uh, way quicker around these guys. And another cutscene would be coming up, but we try to skip that as well. By dying on a certain time. And Bell got it. So he has the, um, the minute of the forest. Now they'll be going over to uh, Gerudo Valley, correct? Yes. We'll see. And Bell first try gets the, the bomb movement backwards. And he is going to take off with that. He can save 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds by doing that. Uh, that backwards bomb movement is called a hyper-extended super slide, uh, otherwise referred to as a HESS, um, by holding ESS position, percent of the joystick, it locks your speed, uh, so when he shields the bomb there, uh, locks the recoil speed, and by targeting, he can keep on moving at that same speed, which is actually the fastest movement in this game. It's actually faster than riding a Pona. Yeah, it looks like TKC was having a few issues getting over him, but he finally got it. So he will be doing the death warp here pretty soon to skip this, the cutscene as well. 
And then what you just saw on Bell's screen there, he did something called a Mega Side Hop. And he used it in conjunction with the Hover Boots in order to cross that gap. Usually to cross that gap, you either need the Long Shot, um, Epona to cross it. And then Bell will, he is going to get caught so that he can do the glitch coming up next so that he can get to the desert. And did we explain what ESS position is? Um, I think I did. Okay. If anyone in chat has any questions regarding that, feel free to ask. Very nicely done by Bell there. And it looks like TKC is just going to take the long route and walk backwards the entire way. Now, in the desert, you have to take a specific path in order to get to the desert palace. Usually you would need the Eye of Truth to follow the ghost about halfway through the desert, the rest of the way, since there are no more flags. And, but I'm sure with speedrunners, they probably know this map so well now. And it looks like Bell has a, a pretty simple setup to get through it here. And the mega side hop as well. side is probably one of the hardest tricks that I would say because of how you have to do it. Yeah, it's very precise. There you got uh, infinite sword glitch and he is now looking for the for the crawl. kind of glitches is that you have to make sure that you have enough bombs in order to get through it. Now, I may be mistaken, but if I remember correctly, in this version of the game, to get the hover that uh, Bell is going for right now, I think his his where he's trying to land is only about a pixel more than that it might be a couple pixels but it's it's a very small margin of error there you almost can't mess up yeah that's what i said it's very precise because he has only the hook shot and he has to yeah hook his way up to the to chest. Oh no. Oh no. He got knocked all the way down by that. Now he has to do with the other the other backup strat. Yeah, he needs bombs now.
Um, so by by taking advantage of the hyperextended super slide and a precise angle, he was able to clip into this area where I'm really supposed to be in. We'll see if uh, TKC is able to do it on his first try, and he'll be pretty much neck and neck with Bell. He might even pass him, actually. Pretty exciting race up to this point here. Uh, TKC missed a uh, boat skip, or excuse me, missed um, the boss key skip in the boat temple. But now he can make it up in the spirit temple. Yeah, it's back and forth. I really like it. Yeah, with these runs, any anything can happen. One mess up can cost you like. 10 minutes or 5 minutes and if all it takes is one of them to mess up and the other one to mess up and it continues to stay close. Now what Bell just did, he was looking for the precise angle to be able to get up to the chest that he had just spawned. So, TKC just had a very unfortunate mistake there to do the hyperextended super slide in conjunction with the hover boots in order to cross that gap. And then he had to jump down because he ran out of bombs and he couldn't do it. By him missing that, it really cost him here. Yeah, the reason why he's dying now, uh, he wants to go back to the spot where he last got out and that was near the chest. Oh, you know what? I didn't even think of that, so never mind. It wasn't that unfortunate. Yeah. But he, he could go I into the main door and grab their bombs, but he would come out below so that's why he did it that way it is still a time loss but he can quickly cover recover on that one whereas bell had to go through the entirety of desert for his bombs and everything Even though the few mess ups that they've had, they are still neck and neck pretty much with TKC with a slight lead. This race may come down to Twin Roba here. And Bell with the lucky bomb drops. He got four bomb drops. TTC got, I think, one in the first round. So, yeah. yeah. He only got one the first round and two on the second. 
That's why uh, Bayer is now ahead again. TKC barely dodging the skull spider there. He would have taken a hefty fall there. And look at this, once again, neck and neck. This boss key skip is really, really cool. like they're pretty much going into the fights at the same time. We'll see if uh, they can both do the glitch to get into the boss room correctly. Which will also skip the cutscene that there is. With Link uh, crouching the way that he is, uh, the Iron Knuckle can't hit him. And it looks like TKC got it. And did Bell? I didn't see the last portion of his. Yeah, both got it. Yeah, then it's coming down to the uh, Twin Rovia fight, and we'll see who uh, who can possibly do it quicker. And who is getting thrown more. Yeah, there's definitely an element of randomness to this fight here. They're going to try their best to control it, but sometimes there's nothing you can do. Yeah, sometimes the movement is that they move longer around and don't shoot at you, so... You have to wait it out. There's nothing you can do about it. And in order to control it, they're going to use the hookshot to try to make one of them consistently spin while the other one shoots them so that they have both of them in the frame to hit them with the mirror shield. missing the shot yeah that's gonna hurt Bell missing one shot can really slow down the fight a little bit yeah he could have gotten uh, a double there so even Not 
TKC is going into the second portion of the fight, and as is Bell, actually. Basically, yeah. you want to get hit with three of the same element in the mirror shield in order to blast it, twin rovia, and knock them down so that you can hit her. Yeah, the first three are always the same. If you get into the second cycle, then she might mix up the elements. And why did it use the hookshot? There is to interrupt the uh, animation so she uh, flies to the next um, platform faster. And then with some precise timing, they were able to stun lock the second phase of Twin Rova so that she couldn't get up and move around again. Now, in the English version, I loved the bickering back and forth of these two. It was great. Yeah. Um, one is saying, I can't die now, I'm only 400 years old. And the other one says, I can't die now, I'm only 380 years old. And then the other one says, you can't be 20 years younger than me, we're twins. Stop lying about your age. checks to make sure you have these two medallions. Yeah, as I said, uh, or I mentioned earlier, that the game will check only for these two, and since we got the Minion of the Forest, they will grab the bow, and after that we will have to watch another cutscene where they get the light arrows. And we see who is chic. It does seem like the other pendants aren't as long of dialogue, though. Keep saying pendants and I mean medallion. Dust, do you remember the name of the ghosts? No. Honestly, I don't remember the, the names. I was hoping you did, because I, I didn't remember either. Uh, the Poe's names are Joel, Beth, Amy, and Meg. Excuse me, Joelle. Meg. Uh, 
That's interesting. I don't know why I could never remember those names there. I don't know. This stuff was uh, actually pretty dangerous. With a drum chest, I think they do two hearts of damage. So if you're not careful, you can die here. Or they can die with, because they only have three hearts. Yeah, picking up the uh, heart containers after each of the couple bosses that they've killed would have caused more text dialogue and wasted a little bit more time. So. They are very comfortable, I'm sure, with running with three hearts, though. Almost in sync. Uh, it looks like Bell messed up the first time. And TKC got it, so TKC is... Keeping his little tiny lead that he's accumulated. Yeah, he tried. He tried to do it fast, but then missed up the frame. I think. I think he was one frame too late. And now he's being more cautious about it. Yep, second try, and they're right next to each other. I'm sure that their hearts are racing sitting next to each other. They can see each other's screens and everything. I think that's the reason why he tried to do it faster. Do it more risky. Uh, and he oh, died. when Bell is taking a death warp, that is not planned. That's really unfortunate. He will lose a bunch of time on that. We'll see if he can make it up, but I think at this point TKC would probably have to mess up as well. Yeah, he even stunned the stuff over there to make it safe. Yeah, he, he knows he has the lead, so I think he's going to take the safer routes and stuff to make sure that he stays there. Okay, Chad, I, I won't say anything about it anymore.
And it looks like Bell's playing this pretty safe here too. Yeah. You can't take another death. He has to hope that TKZ will um, do a mistake and then he can catch up. Well, anything can happen in Ganon's Tower. Oh, you just said that. <laughs> that might be strike three first. <laughs> yeah, that might be. I don't know. Chad will call me out on it in a minute. Yeah, that will. Surprise, guys. Sheik was just really Princess Zelda all along. I thought you were playing as Zelda. No, sorry. You actually play as someone named Link, who is a Hyrulean who happens to be living in Kakariki. Or not Kakariko. I can't even say the word correctly right now. Kokiri. Thank you. Well, I had it wrong this whole time. I thought that you were playing as Zelda. And that you had a fairy companion named Epona. And you were trying to save the Princess Navi. So... <laughs> and that would be fun. That would be a great spin-off. Yeah, we need Rome hack of that. And he is getting his uh, light arrows. Here comes the obligatory chat spamming. What if Zelda was a girl? Yeah, this cutscene takes very, very long. Yeah, it's like seven minutes or something like that. It's ridiculous. Now with what TKC is doing, this is why it only, this is where it checks to see what medallion what medallions you've acquired, and it only checks the spirit and shadow temple to create the bridge. You don't actually need the other 
six. Yeah, it. Uh, the I'm. I think you just saw a six in there where it says you have collected all, but yeah, we collected just three, so. That's the indicator why it's only checking for two. Ooh, very nice. TKC got the uh, glitch on the first try. Yeah, that looked really fast. Yeah, that, that was just simply skipping the trials. Yeah, and now we're climbing, climbing the tower. To play Normally. energy boy terms. Normally, with those trials, you would have to go into one of them and get the golden gauntlet so that you could actually open up uh, one of them and at the end of each of those gauntlets you have to shoot an orb with light arrows so the game automatically assumes when you're at this point that you would have light arrows because it thinks that you have gotten you've done them all That looked really close as well. Yeah, that was very clean by TKC to be able to take those out in such a quick manner. Bell is coming up to do the glitch to climb Ganon's tower. We'll see if he does that on the first try or not while we're going through commentary on TKC's side. Looks good so far. Yeah, what's the right frame? So both runners looked very clean. The rooms of on both sides look uh, look really flawless as well. Top tier will have issues in the last room. Oh, unfortunate. KC is died at the top. Now they will call you out. And that is <laughs> that's strike three for commentators. Curse! Look at you guys here. Hey, we're just trying to keep it interesting, man. <laughs> So I think TKC will still have a bit of a lead here because he won't have to go through that cutscene again, if I remember correctly. Yes, you yeah. don't have to go through that cutscene again. You go straight into the fight.
and rolling up those stairs is faster because they are winding so you wouldn't be able just to walk backwards up them Yeah, TKC only has to go through the last part of the cutscene. That was a very nice sword glitch from TKC to hopefully finish up Ganon. Yeah, his second fight looked way better than the first one. Very nice. But it is with Bell. the crowd stepping. Yeah, Bell decided not to do the infinite sword glitch, but he still got it down just as fast as TKC did. It's all gonna come down to who can get down this tower faster and finish the boss. Tiki Z uh, um, clipped really, really fast um, out of balance there. And it's already down the tower. Oh, he's going to the kiss. Yeah, he's going to get the double kiss here. Uh, doing that Hess right there saves about two seconds. Um, because no matter what, you have to wait for Zelda. Of the speed that he gets going out of there. Or going through the first gate. It pushes Zelda ahead and it saves about two seconds. Yeah, it's not a crazy time save, but it does... Especially with both runners set in such a close spot.
targeting there and holding on and um, basically super sliding into the cutscene uh, allows him to keep his master sword. That's why he's doing it there. Uh, keeping the master sword will reduce the amount of times that he has to hit Ganon. Once again, util utilization of ISG or infinite sword glitch to take down Ganon pretty quickly there. And even though that he still has the master sword, he has to go pick it up again. And TKC is doing some pretty good rolls here to keep Ganon in the same spot so that he can kill him a little bit quicker. Yeah, a little hiccup here, but um, he got it down. Oh, that was close. But I almost got in here. <laughs> <laughs> My bell's just having fun. Yeah. Well, it looks like TKC won overall, but at the end, yeah, Bell was just having a little bit of fun with it since he already knew. Yeah, and it still was really close for a race like this. Yeah, it could have been much, much worse. So TKC finishing with a 128.20 and Bell ending with a 129.08. That is a very close race. That was fantastic.